Thanks to David Bowen and the Harper McLeod team for the opportunity to talk to you today. I remain hopeful that the full conference will indeed take place later this year and that I will get the chance to meet many of you then. But meantime, I very much welcome the opportunity to support this digital offering. I'm Audrey McKeever. I'm the Director of Energy and Low Carbon at Thailand's and Islands Enterprise, the Economic and Community Development Agency for this beautiful and brilliant region. I've been asked to talk about climate change and how the Highlands and Islands can contribute towards a transition to net zero. But as I'm representing the region's Economic and Community Development Agency, first I must address COVID-19 and our response. At this time, it is hard to comprehend the full impact of COVID-19 and what the future holds personally, professionally, and for businesses and communities across the Highlands and Islands. Indeed, I don't feel particularly comfortable speculating at this current time, given the scale of human catastrophe. But it is incumbent upon organisations such as Highlands and Islands Enterprise, responsible for supporting businesses and developing communities, to help during this immediate crisis, and also to plan ahead for the economic recovery in the new world. The UK and Scottish governments have already outlined unprecedented financial and economic measures and to complement those measures, Scotland's three enterprise agencies are working together with their partners, Skills Development Scotland, local authorities and Business Gateway, to support businesses the length and breadth of the country. We encourage organisations to visit findbusinesssupport.gov.scot website and or call the dedicated helpline 0300 303 0660. Further work to prioritise resources and gather industry intelligence to help inform future policy and support mechanisms is underway. Together we are committed to do whatever we can to support businesses and communities at this critical time. And we thank you for all you are doing to help your employees, your businesses, businesses throughout the Highlands and Islands and your communities to survive, stay resilient and adapt to what are very uncertain and challenging circumstances. Moving from one crisis to another, the climate emergency, as declared by First Minister last spring, remains a global crisis, despite any short-term reprieve suggested as a result of COVID-19. And I believe that the Highlands and Islands is very well placed to play a full and active part in ending Scotland's contribution to climate change by the Scottish Government's target date of 2045. We all have a part to play, no matter where we live, by making choices that help to reduce carbon emissions, whether that be the cars that we drive, how we ter- heat our homes, the food that we eat, how we shop, where we go on holiday, etc. But for the Highlands and Islands, there is the opportunity to become an exemplary region in the transition to a low carbon, indeed net zero economy, through the continuing development of a world-class renewable energy industry. We can achieve this by using our people, knowledge, wealth of natural resources, technology and infrastructure for the economic and social benefit of the Highlands and Islands. The transition to net zero emissions will require not just decarbonisation of our power, but of heat and transport too. Much of the answer lies in considerably greater deployment of renewable generation, whether that be to create electrons or alternative vectors such as hydrogen. Further, greater strides in resource efficiency, energy efficiency and a focus on circular economy will be necessary. So why do I believe the region can punch well above its weight? I think there are five key factors. One is that we have a track record of innovation. We are home to a series of world firsts, including the Beatrice Deepwater Wind Demonstrator, the European Marine Energy Centre in Orkney, Wave Energy Scotland as a subsidiary of Highlands and Islands Enterprise. We also have leading technology developers in the space of tidal energy, Maygen, Nova Innovation, Orbital Marine, for example. And we have very many innovative products and services um, coming from companies such as Proterra, 4C Engineering, Pure, for example. Being surrounded by innovative people, businesses and communities, creates a confidence and a desire to do more. Take a look at EMEC, for example. 
highly innovative in its support for wave and tidal testing, has led it with a range of industry and community part partners naturally on to further innovative demonstrations in the area of energy storage, hydrogen and smart energy systems. Innovation breeds further innovation. Secondly, the ability to deliver competitively at scale. We have unique and well-placed port infrastructure to support the likes of the Beatrice Offshore Wind Farm, currently Scotland's largest offshore wind farm operating, Murray East and potentially Murray West offshore wind farms. And as we gear up to support further offshore leasing through Crown Estate Scotland's up and coming Scotland leasing round and seek to deliver against the UK offshore wind sector deal and the UK government manifesto commitments of 40 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2030, the scale will be ever important. Ever increasing turbine sizes and floating wind foundations will require relatively unique facilities, which we have here in the Highlands and Islands. Thirdly, we have a very well equipped supply chain with experience and legacy from the oil and gas and nuclear industries, which has the skills and expertise as well as the leadership to drive forward the transition and energy integration, the build out and operations of on and offshore renewables and the delivery of smart, local, low carbon energy systems. Fourthly, I believe we have a real strong culture of collaboration here in the region. This exists between the Highlands and Islands, within the Highlands and Islands and throughout the Highlands and Islands and with international partners. Academia, industry and the public sector has consistently and effectively led on addressing particular Highlands and Islands challenges and sector-wide opportunities for the benefits of the region. A recent example is the establishment of the Deep Wind Cluster. Over 270 member organisations working together to aid the deployment of offshore wind and secure economic economic benefits from doing so. And more long-term collaborative effort has been that of our ambition to secure island interconnectors, working with industry, local authorities and Scottish Government. So, as well as collaboration, there remains, remains fierce determination. Lastly, in terms of contributory factors, I believe that we have competent, capable communities. And these have been at the heart of the region's renewable energy success story to date. And these will be well placed to support decentralised local energy systems whilst exploring greater use of the region's natural capital, including the vast peatlands for carbon sequestration. Building on such a solid foundation, our priorities over the coming year will be to continue excellence in offshore tests and demonstration, to stimulate business growth through internationalisation and innovation, to secure significant supply chain development and sector-wide growth from the large-scale projects, and to seek to find an enhanced community energy role, including in the demonstration projects in low-carbon local energy systems. But naturally, we'll continue to review these, not just through the lens of net zero, but also through the lens of COVID-19. In conclusion, when it comes time to reflate the economy, I suspect that clean energy and net zero will be at the heart of the UK and Scottish Government plans. This is where I believe there are grounds for cautious optimism in economic recovery for the Highlands and Islands. The natural energy resources in terms of wind, wave and tide, combined with the world-class testing facilities, academia, ports, supply chain and expertise, places this region in a strong position to play a very full and active role. This, all in the context of a new world perhaps, involving new attitudes to home working, local purchasing and travelling, will help our economy not only to survive, but to thrive. I look forward to meeting you in better times later this year and will very much welcome the opportunity to discuss in more detail how the Highlands and Islands can lead the charge on the transition to net zero. Thank you.